Welcome to another episode of Ask the Trainer Live uh, here on Facebook. Today we're going to be talking about proper footwear. So choosing the proper footwear for the activity that you're doing to make sure that you minimize injury, uh, maximize your performance, and look good while doing it. So I'm a big fan of, of shoes. I tend to collect a lot of shoes, take care of my shoes. Uh, I usually have most of my shoes serve, serve a specific purpose while I, while when I buy them. I don't just buy them because they look, they look nice. I definitely do have pairs of shoes that I have for fashion, but first and foremost, I make sure that I choose shoes for their function. So your feet are the, the starting point for everything that happens in your, in your body for most activities. So if your feet aren't working well, if, <laughs> if your feet are up tight, nothing's right. So you wanna make sure that you're choosing the proper footwear for whatever activity that you are doing. Uh, for most of us, uh, throughout most of the day, uh, uh, we're going to be choosing footwear that feels the most comfortable for us. But uh, you wanna make sure that it checks a few things off the box that way you're actually taking care of your feet and not just going just for comfort. So most of the day, most of us may find ourselves We may find ourselves in something like this. So here I have my Crocs. Uh, I use these for a lot of my activities around the house. Uh, when I'm not being terribly active, a lot of people will be using flip-flops or even better, no shoes at all. Uh, so if you do need some type of foot covering just for everyday activities and you're not gonna be standing for too long or walking for too long, uh, those are the, the, the perfect type of shoe. They slip on very easily. They're very flexible. Uh, so even though they uh, provide some type of support, uh, some, some cushion, uh, they're not overly rigid, so they still allow my foot to do what my foot does. Uh, for everyone, uh, that may not be the best option though, so some people's feet are, are, are not the strongest or don't have the, the best shape or, or function, so they may need a, a shoe to relax in that provides a little bit more support, either in the arch, either in stiffness, but, uh, you want to make sure that you choose those shoes when, uh, when it's appropriate. So when you're going to be running around doing a, a lot of different uh, uh, changing of speeds, levels, or directions, that, uh, that probably wouldn't be the best shoe to choose. Something a little more uh, used for activity is this Vans type shoe right here. So this one will actually stay on my foot if I decide to run somewhere or have to move very quickly, but it still wouldn't be the best choice for doing any type of activity where I'm gonna have any type of impact, uh, sustained amount of standing or, or walking or running. Uh, it's a, sh a shoe that I can use to be around the house, be around the office, uh, go run errands, but I would not choose that, that shoe uh, to actually do activities in. It doesn't pr provide uh, very much uh, support in the, in the way of, uh, a lateral support so if I, I needed to change direction uh, my foot would flop right out of that it doesn't have laces to tie me in or or, or secure me in so if, if I'm using that that shoe for activity I'm really asking for trouble so in that type of shoe uh, like a van or or say something like uh, loosely tied chucks or that that style of shoe that shoe you would not want to do any type of strenuous activity uh, or anything outside of stationary uh, weightlifting and even uh, even so that might not necessarily be your best choice for actual activity uh, so moving on uh, we're actually going to show you a shoe that I actually do use for weightlifting so these are the Addy, Addy Boost so this is an actual weightlifting shoe right here so this shoe has a flexible toe in case I need to put that, that foot back for a, a lunge or or bend my toe for a step up. This allows me to bend my toe, but the rest of this shoe here is completely stiff. It's completely rigid. So this gives me the maximum amount of stability and uh, has, also has a raised heel. So this allows me to stay more upright uh, through squatting activities. So if I have this type of shoe on when I squat, I'll be able to stay a lot more vertical as opposed to say doing like a back squat with uh, without these, I'd be forced to lean forward a lot more, which could place more stress on my spine. So for a lot of people who struggle with ankle mobility or just uh, lumbo pelvic control in general, this gives you uh, the boost that you need. And just by giving this extra inch, 
to be able to balance and stay a lot more upright and make that exercise a lot safer for you and for some people make that exercise a lot more effective so uh squatting it within the gym is arbitrary movement as it is so this allows your body to uh perform that that movement a lot more efficiently make it a lot uh less risky uh so there is something to be uh, said for squatting barefoot but if uh you are looking to uh, maximize that squatting pattern oftentimes this this shoe allows you to do that as opposed to just doing two two hinges and your deadlift and your squat this may allow you to stay a little more upright and make your squat a little more squatty uh, but it, is, it isn't for everyone so some people will feel a lot more comfortable without this shoe uh, some people may feel more comfortable with a higher heel so you may want to try out different shoes to see which one will be the best fit for you when it comes to weightlifting or even uh, using this at the beginning of your workout for certain lifts and then once you're done with those lifts where they require this a little bit of, of heel, uh, you can swap out to a different pair of shoes later in your workout. So this is a good choice if you are going to be doing uh, squatting movements, it helps you perform those squatting movements a little more easily. So it often say that you shouldn't require those uh, to do to do a squat, uh, but I would say doing a barbell bat squat is not <laughs> necessarily a natural movement. So anything that you can do to make that movement safer and more more effective, I'd say say go ahead. So if that's a tool that uh, helps you, that'd be a good choice. Uh, so we also have a cross training shoe. So these cross training shoes uh, can be used for many activities. So they can be used for weightlifting, for running, uh, for uh, say light athletics. I wouldn't do anything too aggressive in, in, in this shoe because of the, the amount of uh, traction that it has. Uh, so I wouldn't do too, too aggressive of, of say drills on the grass with this because you'll slip and slide. But as far as light plyometrics uh, on a stable surface, this is a pretty good shoe. And for uh, short distances of running, this is probably a pretty good shoe as well. But as you uh, get uh, into longer and longer distances, you may want to actually try and find a shoe that's matching uh, the level of activity that you're doing. So uh, shoes that a lot of people use for, for, for longer distance running may be a little more minimal than this and maybe may have a little more cushion than this. So this is a shoe that allows you to do a variety of things, not necessarily one thing very well, but it gives you the option of being able to do many uh, activities with one shoe. So you can see that the shoe is smooth on the bottom, flexible, but it laces up tight uh, to your foot like a glove and it won't uh, allow your foot to slide out very easily. It doesn't have too much lateral support. Uh, so if, if you do, uh, turn your ankle on this, it's going. So you wanna make sure that you are doing activities that are appropriate for this shoe. So if you are on the grass and doing things that are very aggressive, you may wanna reconsider and actually get a cleat instead of just using the, uh, the cross training shoe and save this for surfaces like cement, wood, carpet, uh, something that you'd find inside of the gym. And then moving on from the cross training shoe, uh, which is a good a good uh, shoe to use for for a lot of activities. Uh, so are minimalist shoes. So a lot of people they don't appreciate the the large amount of cushion in a lot of modern shoes. So a shoe like this may be an option for people that do don't necessarily uh, want all the extra interference from the shoe. They don't want the extra cushion or abnormal movement patterns that a lot of shoes create. So this is pretty much. A sock with rubber on it it folds it could bend into many different uh shapes so whatever shape your foot wants to take uh that's the sh shape that the shoe is going to take so you want to make sure that you do have a strong base and if you do start uh wearing these shoes and are new to these shoes you want to make sure that you are definitely easing your way into it so if you're someone who's been wearing uh shoes with high cushion for your entire life you probably aren't going to be able to go and spend a full day with, with these shoes on. And I would even suggest spending more than 20 minutes with them on the first couple times and then building your way up from there. Because if you get too aggressive and try and force your way in it to be able to 
use this minimalist type of shoe. That's when you can get uh, overuse injuries, uh, uh, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, knee pain. If you don't have the strength and prerequisite mobility needed in a lot of the joints uh, that are in your foot, over a quarter of the joints in your body are in your foot, then you're gonna experience pain either in your foot or somewhere else. So it's something that needs to gra gradually be built up to. So you have shoes that are like this, that are more shoe-like, and then you have uh, other shoes like these. Uh, these are uh, Feiyue's, uh, they are a martial arts shoe. So uh, a lot of the same char characteristics as the other shoe uh, with uh, just a little bit more structure to this shoe because it's made to actually uh, kick as well So it has a little more material on, on top, but it's a very minimalist shoe as well so this is uh, Another uh, great shoe. That's a minimalist shoe and oftentimes with minimalist shoes Come a minimalist price if you find the right ones uh, For some of them they're more expensive than a shoe with more material which doesn't make much sense, but uh, they do give generally give your foot more room to spread and, and be a foot. And if that's something that uh, you've been doing your whole life, that may be something that you may wanna continue with your footwear and it can continue uh, keeping you healthy. Uh, but if it's something that will be new to you, you definitely have to ease into that. And then you also have the, uh, the end of the extreme, the shoes that everyone hates, <laughs> are the five fingers. So these shoes have gotten a pretty bad rap over, over the years, but uh, it's mostly from people that were unprepared to actually be barefoot for the majority of, of the time. And these shoes, yeah, pretty much are like being barefoot. It has a little bit of rubber on the bottom to stop you from uh, stepping on anything uh, sharp, but it won't stop a nail from going through your foot. Uh, but yeah, pretty much most rocks and all that will be uh, impervious. It'll be impervious too. So. Uh, this is a, sh a shoe that allows your feet to spread like your fingers, uh, like your hands. So your toes, they should have independent movement and be able to spread and close. And that shoe actually allows for that to happen. So for many of us, our shoes are cramped up into, into areas that are much smaller than what they would be uh, if they were allowed to splay out. So imagine if you had gloves around your hands for your entire life, how sorry your hands would be. So. Same thing happens with your feet. Those uh, joints and muscles need to be able to spread and move around to actually be able to be used and continue to function. If they're constantly bound together, then they'll begin to atrophy and adapt to being in that position. So you wanna make sure that even if you aren't wearing these type of shoes, you're taking the time to give your feet uh, the opportunity to spread, move, and be mobile as, as much as you can because that's where they're meant to be. Uh, they weren't meant to be in, in foot coffins all day, but uh, a lot of there's a lot of dangerous stuff around on the ground, and then there's a lot of uh, advantages to wearing shoes. So uh, even though our, there are a lot of advantages to being barefoot, uh, being able to exercise in shoes when it comes to say the squatting, where it puts you at a at a mechanical advantage, uh, the shoes can be advantageous. Or a basketball shoe uh, that provides just enough cushion. Uh, that you you aren't constantly constantly injuring your joints, or or certain shoes that provide stability so that you can apply more force to the ground and be faster. Say like a track spike, uh, where it has an inflexible arch that allows you to apply more force to the ground. So there are advantages to wearing shoes, not just to be ba being barefoot. So you should explore both. And and when you are choosing uh, shoes, uh, make sure that they're actually appropriate so there are many running shoes out there that are pr pretty terrible for running there are many basketball shoes out there that i wouldn't play basketball in they just look cool so you want to make sure that you actually uh not necessarily give a test run in in the store but have an idea of what you want your foot to feel like when you're doing an activity so i have here a nike air max so this has the big air bubble in the heel. So I wouldn't suggest doing any activity in this shoe because this heel makes you unstable when it comes to uh, when it comes time to apply force or absorb force. So even though it has more cushion, I'd say that this shoe is a lot more likely to injure you than a shoe that's a little bit more stable and a little bit more dense. So there is such thing as too much cushion when you have so much cushion that you're unstable 
the shoe can be a little more detrimental to the activity than, uh, than you would like. So I also have a pair of basketball shoes here to show you. So these are my basketball shoes that I, I have here. I like it because I can tie, securely tie my foot into the shoe. So there's no sliding of my shoe forward, uh, my, of my foot in the shoe forward or, uh, or backward, side to side. Uh, I don't feel like ankle supporting shoes really do give you ankle support, but what they do give you is a tactile uh, cue to, or feedback to be able to sense where you are in space. So I like the feel of just a little bit of material on my ankle to let me know how much my foot is sliding in, in a particular moment or turning. But I think if you're gonna sprain your ankle, I don't think the shoe's gonna save you, but it's, it, it is nice to have that, that feedback and that, that pressure that provides a little bit of security for me. So I like, I like the, the higher top or mid top basketball shoes. I know a lot of people like uh, low, the low top shoes but it just feels a little a, a little weird for me playing on those little creepy playing and with low top shoes uh, playing basketball. But I I can definitely see how it would feel pretty good for some people. So here's the shoes that I do play in. These are good basketball shoes that I would say uh, fit fit my needs for playing basketball. I also have a pair of Jordan shoes. So. These are a popular basketball shoe, but I would say these are a basketball shoe just for fashion. So these shoes don't provide very, very much uh, cushion or lateral support. So uh, they, they aren't very comfortable to play in. I've played a, a few times in them, uh, but yeah, they're definitely just a, sh a shoe that you would want to uh, use and walk around when you when you're trying to make a fashion statement not necessarily play on the on the basketball court and i would say that goes for the majority of basketball shoes and i just saw recently uh, in the last dance documentary michael jordan himself he played in his first pair of, of jordans that he wore he rewore them uh years later i think it was like eight years later and he had to be pretty much helped off the court. His feet were destroyed after playing in his own shoe that, that, that he had played in uh, years before. So the technology for the shoes has definitely come a long way. So you wanna make sure that you take advantage of that new technology and not just the, the flashy looks and go for a shoe when you are gonna play basketball uh, that you feel comfortable moving around in, gives you the, the right amount of support that you need and will stand up to the activity that you, you planned on doing. So we all saw Zion Williamson blow his shoe out. So that was a very poorly made basketball shoe. So there are, very, there are different uh, YouTube sites and websites that rate shoes and on their durability, their style, their comfort, how much they weigh, uh, all the specifics that you would wanna know. Uh, you can do research and find the right shoe for you because I would hate for you to go out and play basketball in the wrong shoe or poorly built shoe and the shoe blows out on you or or doesn't uh, provide you with the right things that you need and you end up injured. So uh, I would uh, say that uh, you, you should definitely try on your shoes uh, first before you buy them. And if you are buying shoes online, make sure that your shoe uh, distributor has a, a free return policy in case that that shoe doesn't feel, feel right. So we're gonna move on to some hiking shoes. So these are my Merrells. So they have traction on the bottom. So if I'm going over whatever terrain I come across, I'm not gonna be slipping and sliding. Uh, they, they have a good lacing system that uh, gets snug around my ankle, uh, but it still has the ability for my ankle to, to roll freely and not too much material around it. I, I actually don't like hiking boots for myself. Uh, I, I have bigger calves, longer legs, so hiking boots tend to rub. These tend to keep, keep my ankle nice and free. And uh, they're lightweight, easy to wash, but they have many, many different style of hiking boots. Make sure that you have a shoe that's heavy enough to protect you, but light enough not to make you too tired and is comfortable for you. It doesn't rub in too many spots. So uh, unlike with a lot of the other activities that I said before, besides probably basketball, the likelihood of you getting blisters is very low. You want to make sure that you're choosing a shoe that fits your foot because if you have any part of your foot that rubs along 
one, two or three miles, that may be fine. But as you start getting into longer and longer walks and hikes or, or trail runs, that can definitely become a problem. So that uh, if you have something that, that rubs, uh, putting a Band-Aid over it may be a solution. But I say pick a shoe from the get-go that definitely fits a lot better and, and it'll have you, have you comfortable. And uh, Merrill makes a, a lot of good shoes. Uh, that, that I like to cho to choose from, but I like to do different types of hiking as well. So that would be uh, for an activity where I would uh, go and staying pretty dry. Uh, it's not going to get too cold. But if I was going to go somewhere warmer or uh, where I'm going to be in the water, I have my Keens. So these are my grandpa shoes, my old man shoes. They uh, provide a nice. Uh, a barrier for your toes so you won't jam your toes but the rest is open so say if it's a particularly hot place your feet uh, can breathe they won't get overly sweaty if you do have to go in the water uh, they, they dry off pretty quickly and they protect your foot so you can use these for, for hiking and, and yeah, all conditions that, that don't, don't get too cold and, and you can just rinse them off so these are a great shoe to be able to do mini activities. I like to go fishing or when I'm in Hawaii, uh, they're, they have sharp lava rocks and, and coral and sea urchins. So this is a good shoe to take me wherever I need to go without having to worry about destroying my feet. All right. And then I also have a water shoe. So if I do plan on being in the water and yeah, there's a lot of sharp rocks around, uh, sea urchins, probably won't do much against a stingray but I'd rather have a shoe than not. So I would say uh, water shoes, yeah, they're pretty specific to water. You can wear them outside of water, but everyone's gonna know their water shoes and call you out on it. So uh, you wanna make sure that you have, yeah, the, the appropriate footwear for the activity that you're doing. And and yeah, if you are struggling to to come up with your ideal shoe, there are plenty of knockoffs that serve, serve the same purpose. Uh, you want to make sure that you do rotate through your shoes. So I, I have a lot of shoes, that way my shoes last. So whatever activity that I am doing, I can choose a specific shoe for that activity. And that's the only time that shoe is going to be, be worn. And your shoes will last a lot longer that way if they're used if they're being used what they're intended for. So if I go to take out those cross training shoes and try and play basketball in them, they won't last nearly as long as a basketball shoe would. Or if I'm trying to do lunges in my basketball shoes constantly all day, uh, the toe may start coming apart a lot faster than uh, say, uh, say a cross training shoe. Uh, so I would say uh, try and pick shoes that are good for multiple things like cross training shoes if you're if your budget is limited but if you if you pick the right shoes and you take care of your shoes your shoes could last a long time my shoes typically last years and you do want to make sure that you don't have so many shoes that you can't get through them though because one of the most heartbreaking stories uh, regarding my shoes were i saved this one pair of shoes probably like for like five years i only wore them like seven times and then one day I went to go put them on and they pretty much disintegrated. So you have to <laughs> make sure you use them while you have them. You can't save them uh, forever, but uh, by choosing them for the, pr uh, the proper activity, you'll make sure that they last a lot longer, you last a lot longer. Uh, you just have to put in, put in the time, put in the effort to make sure that you have a good fit. All right, uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. I'll give you a, uh, a few seconds to come up with a few questions if you have any. All right, so I would say uh, make sure, especially now, uh, if a lot of you are staying at home, make sure that you're barefoot uh, as much as you comfortably can be. You wanna make sure that you are giving your, your feet the opportunity to be feet. Uh, uh, if you do need or, orthotics, uh, make sure that you do use your orthotics, but try and uh, use exercises that progress you 
uh, to maybe have less dependence on them or or and make sure that you are using them appropriately that way you don't develop any any issues and also make sure that your toe box so I mentioned how your toes are meant to spread make sure that you have a toe box wide enough that your toes aren't crossing over on each other and avoid heels as as much as you can if you're going out uh, ladies and uh, you, you want to look nice that's fine but wearing heels day in and day out and being excessive can cause a multitude of foot problems just from the position that it holds your foot in the the minimal amount of space that it gives your toes it, it can definitely trash many things past your feet uh, all right first question any recommendations for a pool guy cleaning pools all day uh, I would say uh, I would choose uh, the cross training shoes so that allows you to get in a lot of different a lot of different positions and do a lot of different activities uh, if you do need to to actually get your feet wet I, I would would shy away from from the cross training shoe but I'd say it's staying outside of the pool and doing everything you need to do that gives you enough cushion and support to be able to have your feet feeling nice so uh, maybe like a Nike free or uh, more one of the Adidas uh, type uh, shoes that are like Nike Freeze with a little bit less of a cushion. So one of the little more low profile shoes would be something that may work for you. And yeah, I'll, I definitely would try to avoid too heavy of boots because those tend to uh, prevent your big toe, uh, your big toe especially from bending, but all your toes from bending. So you do wanna have shoes that allow your toes to bend. All right, do we have any more questions? All right, if no one has questions, I will be seeing everyone next week on Instagram Live with Freddie. Uh, if anyone has any more questions and this video has ended, you can leave comments down below and we'll try and get back to them either in the comment section or if it's a pretty good question, we'll try and cover it in, in one, of the, one of these segments. All right, well, everyone take care and I'll see you next week. I'll be one year older, it's my birthday this Saturday. So <laughs> I plan on making it back. See everyone in a little bit.